All right. Um, I'd like to thank Tama for organizing this panel and for everyone who is a part of the panel. My talk is on the hashtag and phenomenon of hashtag West Coast wedding. Um, this is a common hashtag to locate one's wedding on the West Coast of Canada or the U.S. Um, uh, the coupling of wedding with West Coast also signals a certain kind of like style of wedding, which often involves nature. Um, we're being nature filled uh, and showing the West Coast of North America, which is very lush and beautiful, nature filled place. And so many of the weddings that are featured under this hashtag have adopted um, or uh, adopt this hashtag to accentuate nature. You could say nature is sort of like a player or a participant in the curation of these images. So uh, what I was interested in doing with this hashtag, along with my research assistant, Jamie um, Hohaluk, was to look not specifically at the images, um, like to do a semiotic analysis of the images under the hashtag, but rather we took a, a post-phenomenological approach to interview commercial photographers who photograph these hashtag West Coast weddings. Um, a post-phenomenological approach basically is interested in the lived experiences of people as phenomenology historically was interested in, but against phenomenology, um, which often sought to sort of make generalizations about people's lived experiences, the post in post-phenomenology signifies a post-structural or critical approach to lived experiences. Um, so post-phenomenology is interested in how embodied experience is at once felt and in, or feels innate, like similar to Mer what Merleau-Ponty argued, but is also socially constructed, so a la, you know, Foucault and Butler. Um, or also really important is that post-phenomenology is specifically interested in how embodied experiences are experienced in relation to technologies. So Don Ivey, who's considered the kind of like granddaddy of post-phenomenology, looks at all sorts of technological encounters and how our perception and embodiment habituate with and around technologies such that um, our sense of perception and embodiment feel natural um, with prolonged uses of different technologies. So going back to the West Coast weddings, what we were interested in was what forces shape the perception of commercial photographers towards West Coast weddings or what um, or images that adopt this hashtag West Coast wedding um, hashtag. So we were interested in what sort of fingers or tendrils construct what be what becomes this kind of habituated gaze for the West Coast weddings by commercial photographers. Um, so even if for the photographers taking the images, the, the way they take the images might feel natural and embodied, right, which for many of uh, the photographers, they, they, it did. They said they didn't really think much about um, why they crafted images in a certain way that during the interviews we sort of came, when we came in as sort of newbies and we asked them to explain and walk us through a series of images as a sort of like photo elicitation um, so we could hear at once their embodied narratives of remembering the process of taking the images but then also we could probe them a little further into kind of revealing what some of these forces were at play in shaping the gaze, this habituated gaze in relation to their camera in relation to the camera and the event, and then in relation specifically to the idea that these images inevitably would be shared on Instagram. Um, so I'll give you a couple of examples here um, of uh, two ways. So if material, discursive, and affective forces are at play in the construction of this Instagram visuality that we were sort of coming to reveal in the phenomenon of the West Coast wedding. I'll give you two examples. So one example is how materiality or the technology came into play, and then another one is how um, affect and discourse came into play. So um, in terms of material or technological forces, um, all the photographers we uh, spoke with worked with DSLR cameras, uh, digital single lens reflex cameras, um, and many of them would use um, low f-stop, uh, meaning that the aperture of the camera was very large, um, so allowing a lot of light in. And the effect this has on the constructed images is that 
um, the center of the image becomes very much in focus and the background becomes very blurred. So in this image, you can kind of see this here that we have these sort of like blurred foregrounded, but then the cake in this image is like very, very clear. And this was a very common sort of visual trope um, in which the, the photographers use the technology of the camera to evoke certain um, very common effects for the hashtag West Coast wedding images. Um, so why was this? For many of the photographers, they said this is what was popular. Um, it mimicked Instagram filters like the X-Pro filter and the Lo-Fi filter on Instagram. Um, whether the commercial photographers were aware of this or not, these Instagram filters were designed actually to mimic the historical effects of what are, what's called burning and dodging in historical chemical photography, where in the development of the image and image in you know the 70s and the 80s, this became very popular in portrait and family photography, where the center of the image, where the people were featured, was um, developed more, more light was allowed to show on that part of the film, and then the surrounding part of the image um, was, uh, there were sort of objects that were held around the outside, around the framing, so that those parts of the image were less developed. And the evoked sort of emotions and affect were feelings that we now associate with nostalgia and memory. They're often used in visual culture in movies to sort of um, evoke sort of like memory shots or memory um, clips of video when people go back into the past. And they also manifest and have come to manifest through this sort of habituation of this Instagram gaze in the construction of the hashtag West Coast wedding. Um, another uh, form of um, sort of visual, Instagram visuality that we saw a lot of the commercial photographers adopt um, had to do with um, discourse and affect. And here I have an image um, of what uh, a few of the photographers called the laughing bride. <laughs> Um, and uh, this can be related to uh, what Crystal Abaddon calls the contrived authenticity, um, experiences of contrived authenticity. Um, so what we said here was so the rise of camera phone technologies obviously has led to uh, sort of like next generation of digital images, images that tend to show more life, more movement, um, as Ben House describes, images that are more sort of transitory. Um, and Okabe and Ito also refer to the rise of images that represent the sort of banal and mundane everyday life. Um, and so this example of the laughing bride, we, uh, it was a term, like I said, that was used by a few of the photographers. And one person described this as, um, that brides often want candid photos and ones, especially of them laughing out loud as if they were having the time of their life. Um, and one person said when they discussed this with the client, um, that they didn't want the wedding photos that look like their parents' photos, where the woman is like all tight and quiet. They want the bride to be, a, um, to be, look, to look like she's having fun. Um, so here we have this sort of habituation of this genre of wedding photo that's partly connected to the client's desire to capture an affective memory, right, that looks authentic, looks like they're in the moment having fun, but also um, this image is connected to kind of gendered narratives, generational narratives of subjectivity, like what a good and proper bride historically was and what a good and proper bride should look like now. So finally we see this kind of perpetuated perpetuation of this type of photo, photo also is becoming habituated amongst photographers. We heard a couple of photographers talk about this laughing bride kind of trope um, that uh, then becomes a trope that other brides see and then themselves mimic for their own photos. So in short, this project is still in the works. Um, COVID kind of uh, put a little bit of a setback in us being able to do our interviews. Um, but we're still doing interviews, we're still analyzing, and these are just a few of the ideas and um, data sets I wanted to share with you um, that have come up so far. Uh, so in summary, we can see that obviously Instagram is a platform that has deeply come to shape this kind of gaze or perceptual the perceptual habits of commercial photographers who shoot images um, where the images uh, serve multiple audiences, the clients themselves who are getting married, but also... Um, 
uh, Instagram itself, uh, where the clients will inevitably be sharing these and also the photographers will be sharing these images online for their own marketing purposes.